Hello everyone and welcome to another video on our YouTube channel. Today, I'm here with Brad to explain what ejection fraction is and what it means for heart failure patients. We will also touch on some other common echocardiogram measures that helps your cardiologist to evaluate the severity of your heart failure. Before we jump into these echo measures, we first want to show how a healthy heart looks like in someone without a heart failure. As you can see, in the left heart, a healthy heart is able to relax just enough to adequately refill with blood after every heartbeat. A second component of a healthy heart is its ability to pump at least half of the blood in its left ventricle to the rest of the body. So Rad, take us away. What are some measurements that the cardiologists look at? Yes, the first one is actually ejection fraction, or to be more specific, left ventricular ejection fraction, or LVEF for short. And in simple terms, this is the fraction of the oxygenated blood that your left ventricle is able to pump out with every single heartbeat. And it's usually shown as a percentage with the fraction shown on this slide. And for example, an ejection fraction of 55% means that your left ventricle is pumping out approximately 55% of its blood with every single heartbeat. Okay, so what is a normal ejection fraction? Yes, although this can slightly vary depending on the individual, a normal ejection fraction is usually between 50 and 70%. But in a subset of heart failure patients, the left ventricle can weaken, and so their ejection fraction can fall well below 50%. And when this happens, the heart pumps less oxygen in the blood to the rest of the body. And as a result, you have um, the usual symptoms of a congestive heart failure, such as shortness of breath, fatigue, ankle, leg swelling. And in fact, this type of heart failure is known as systolic heart failure because of this reduced ejection fraction. Okay, that definitely makes sense. Um, can I still have heart failure with a normal ejection fraction? The short answer is actually yes. Uh, and this is because this condition will be called diastolic heart failure or heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And in this type of heart failure, the left ventricle has gotten a little bit more stiff. And so it cannot relax enough to refill with blood. So even though the ventricle is pumping out the same fraction of blood, let's say 55%, the total blood pumped out is not adequate, which causes the usual signs of congestive heart failure, which is when blood is just backing up, just like a pipe. Okay, um, so why is it still important to look at ejection fraction then? Well, it's important because other than helping clinicians to differentiate between heart failure types, it may also be associated with lower all-cause mortality, according to this study. Um, in fact, there was a review done of around 200,000 patients, which found that the lowest risk of all-cause mortality was seen in those with an ejection fraction of approximately 6 to 65%. And in fact, this was also shown across all the age groups, as you can see on the left diagram here. Um, but perhaps more interestingly, a similar all-cause mortality risk was seen in those with a high ejection fraction of above 70%, and with those with ejection fractions of 30 to 40%. But the story is a bit different for heart failure patients who have already been hospitalized. In fact, in 2017, there was an analysis of around 40,000 patients that showed that lower ejection fraction may not necessarily or significantly increase mortality risk in patients who have already been hospitalized with congestive heart failure. And so when we look at the, the table on the, on the left side, the blue table, we can see that there's a similar 75% five-year mortality risk from the first hospital admission, and that is very similar in all three groups of patients with varying levels of ejection fraction. And lastly, we, we also want to tell you a little bit about E-prime average, which is another tool in your cardiologist toolbox when it comes to managing your heart failure. And in simple terms, this ratio is an estimate of the pressure in the left atrium or left ventricle, and it tells us about the the diastolic function of the left side of your heart or its ability to relax and refill with blood. In general terms, a value lower than eight indicates normal filling pressure, but anything beyond 12 may indicate diastolic dysfunction or high filling pressure. Wow, thank you so much, Rat. And that brings us to the end of today's video. 
But before we go, we'd also like to clarify that the accurate interpretation of these echo values can vary for each patient and the exact diagnosis and prognosis requires holistic assessment from your cardiologist. And if you'd like to learn more, we encourage you to check out our full heart failure playlist on our channel. Take care and we hope to see you in another video.